Good morning, everybody. This is Yehuda Shamroth of Ramat Beit Shemesh, Israel. Welcome to Wednesday, Wellness Wednesdays.
Hello, is my microphone working? Is my microphone working? It seems like it is. Okay. Hello, I think we're still live. Okay, sorry, people. Ten minutes took me to pick this up. Uh, today's uh, webinar on health matters is on fibromyalgia. Now, fibromyalgia is an interesting topic because it, um, <clears throat> it's something that is a, a real big problem among 5 million people in America and all over the world. And we're going to talk about what is fibromyalgia. We're going to talk about what, uh, how to diagnose it, how big is the problem, what you can do about it. And uh, don't take uh, don't take it too hard because it is a very debilitating disease for some people. But we we have a lot we can do about it. We've learned so much over the years, and I have a very special guest speaker, Sarah Halevi, who is um, might want to turn off one of your microphones. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean by getting a, I'm getting a um, hold on. Jeez, every day it's technical something, isn't it? Okay, is this better, Susan? My, my internet went off. I really apologize. I'm having such a hard time with this now. Lost, I lost my slides. I just like, I am mis, not Miss Technical. Trust me. I just, uh, I've got a PowerPoint that I can't even get on here. Let's see if I can get this on. Hold on. We shall try. We shall try. I've got a few slides. Okay. Taskbar. Okay, so I've just got a few slides. I did. I had a few more, but I just um, there's still an echo. Okay, we turn it down a little bit. I don't know what to do about the echo. I'm very sorry. I have I have a microphone, a proper microphone, plugged in, and uh, I'll check it one more time. The audio. It says it's going default microphone, and this is 2020. It's still going. Uh, okay. It's, I have echo cancellation. Sound is fine. Thank you. Oh, thank God for Susan Lewis. <laughs> okay, let's start over again. What is fibromyalgia? And pretty soon we're going to welcome our guest, our Susan Halevi. So Susan, you can join us anytime. Uh, I'm just going to give a little overview of what is my, uh, fibromyalgia. Let's see if I can get a slideshow going because I do have, I, I lost my entire slideshow when the internet went off, but I can share a few things with you. Okay. So fibromyalgia, okay, it's a very nonspecific, what they call a rheumatism. Now, rheumatism is a, just a catch-all term that they used in the old days, still used now for muscle aches and pains and inflammation and joint pain and all like an overall uh, term for diffuse body, major, major pain throughout the entire body, whether it's muscle or joint. So it's called a rheumatism. So the typical symptoms are widespread musculoskeletal pain and stiffness with accompanying fatigue, anxiety, uh, sleep disorders, or irritable bowel. You can see this picture where the pain is. Uh, people feel pain so excruciatingly that my patients will tell me that uh, imagine standing with your arms out and holding like a gallon of milk on each side. And then you know how it starts to get sore in your upper arms and stay there for another five minutes, stay there for another five minutes and stay there for another five minutes until you're, you're crying. The pain is so severe. She says every day that she wakes up and even when she's in her sleep, this is the pain she feels all over her body. And for many, many years, this was very misdiagnosed and very largely ignored. Why was it ignored? Because first of all, the majority of the patients are women, and I'm not saying that I'm not putting the medical community down, but women who have hormonal issues that fluctuate and they're emotional anyway. We are, we have to admit it. I know I'm not ashamed to admit we're, it's, it, it's a blessing we have more emotions than men do because we keep families together, we keep our lives together. But the, pro, the thing is that uh, because women tend to be more emotional and have more hormonal fluctuations in their lives uh, and in their symptoms of things. Uh, with PMS and stuff like that, they were largely ignored and they couldn't be diagnosed very easily for many, many years because every blood test that they would come up with would be normal. And every single, there was no scan for it. There was no definitive uh, diagnosis, diagnostic tools. So we know the experts in the United States and Canada have developed certain diagnostic criteria now. 
from the Arthritis Foundation, which I'll talk about in a minute. But this disease appears to affect increasingly numbers of people, even men now. So there are books out there now that are catering to men with fibromyalgia. And we'll I'll talk in a minute about the cause of this and how, but traditionally, especially since the 1990s until about 2002, so many people were turned away told pretty much that they were crazy, that you don't have anything wrong with you, it's all in your head, and they would be sent away with a prescription for an antidepressant, uh, which was very, it's tragic because so many people suffered and didn't have to. But there was a groundbreaking study in 2002, it showed that the uh, abnormalities, there, was, there were abnormalities in how the brain processes pain in patients who have fibromyalgia. And this has finally provided the objective data to prove that there is such a thing as my fibromyalgia. You will talk to some doctors until today, my husband included. I, I just interviewed him last night. He's an OBGYN doctor who's retired now for many years, but he teaches. He says when he was a, a resident, they just would pretty much ignore people with these symptoms because they didn't have, they didn't have the name fibromyalgia for it yet. They didn't even have the name. So he says that it was, uh, these people just suffered. So what happens with fibromyalgia? Okay, the hallmark, of course, is muscle pain throughout your whole body, which comes and goes and usually just stays on. You can see there's fatigue, there's sleep disturbance, there's cognitive problems. A lot of people have what they call brain fog. Uh, they just can't think straight. They can't focus. They can't concentrate. You can even have jaw pain. Uh, you can have tender points all over the body, which I'll talk about in a minute. Pain in the muscles, pain in the joints. You can have nausea, irritable bowel syndrome. You can have rashes and skin problems urinary problems you can have like things that feel like uti all the time which is what people think women or especially i would say women because this was largely women for so many years they would go to every single possible doctor they could go to and they would be turned away say there's nothing wrong with you you know the urologist would say there's nothing wrong the gynecologist would say there's nothing wrong the neurologist would say there's nothing wrong and the rheumatologist would say there's nothing wrong and your medical doctor so where does that leave a person with tmj pain and chest pain they'd go to the cardiologist they would run from doctor to doctor exhausting spend a lot of money spend a lot of time um and, and the problem with this too is that it's a very complicated disease and look at how many different uh, body systems are affected and different people affected different ways not one person will have all these things some people will just have the musculoskeletal pain and some people will have chest pain or restless leg syndrome it's just so confusing and it does mimic other kinds of diseases so for instance uh, here's the brain fog. There's depression because of it. Yes, people will end up on antidepressants. Why wouldn't you? You have pain, ex ex excruciating pain, and widespread problems all over that nobody nobody thinks you you are in pain. They're just telling you you're not. So the problem with this is that fibromyalgia symptoms mimic other illnesses like lupus, you know, chronic like let's say autoimmune kinds of diseases, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. Polymyalgia rheumatica. Um, there are all these different thyroid disease, type 2 diabetes, anemia, chronic fatigue. So, because there's so much confusion and that you see these little dots all around the body, I, I lost my slideshow. I'm really sorry, but these are pretty much a lot of the areas where they're sensitive at most people, but they're ultra, ultra sensitive in the uh, fibromyalgia patient. And there's a little exam you can do that, that tests all these different spots. There's some in the back. Also, I, again, I lost my slideshow because my, my internet just went off. And I didn't save it. <laughs> so you learn lesson learned. No slideshow. Okay. So anyway, the diagnosis is very difficult. Now it's better because people are actually looking for it. And now you can even talk to somebody by you can talk to a regular medical doctor, thank God. And I think our guest speaker will have a lot to say about this too, because she had her own fibromyalgia journey. And uh she may she may find unfortunately still there are people out there who do not recognize that there is such a thing as fibromyalgia, but the, it is real, the pain is real. So we talked a bit about the tender points. I can't do too much about it. My slides are gone. But when people, when regular people feel the tender points, it's part of an exam you'll do. But most of the exam and most of the diagnosis is probably going to come from patient's history and how long they've had the pain and maybe what led up to it because they still don't even know what causes fibromyalgia tr really truthfully but they do know there's no lab tests or x-rays that can confirm it so it makes it very very difficult but we do know that it is real so what are the causes of fibromyalgia so we don't have any good answer to this but we do have a lot of clues uh, as the cause of fibromyalgia is really largely unknown, it is characterized and diagnosed pretty much by its symptoms, okay? Chronic widespread pain, just like we said, and diagnosed by its symptoms and, and uh, it, it, in connection with the central nervous system. So there are two important things we like to do is look for what kind of, what kind of things might have led up to fibromyalgia. Uh, so some do doctors believe it's hormonal, uh, chemical imbalances, or maybe, um, you know, the way 
the, uh, the chemical imbalances, which disrupted the way the nerves will signal pain. People have different ways of signaling pain to, through the nervous system to the brain and back out to the body. And the, the regular way, I have lost my slides, but the regular way we get these messages is right through the spinal cord to the brain and back out the spinal cord and again to the, to the, to the extremities. And some pe the people with fibromyalgia seem to have ultra sensitive uh, responses to this pain, to this pain response. And not only that, they have ultra sensitive um, and hyperactive responses to the stress response, which we talked about last week in our adrenal fatigue class, uh, which is the, the fight or flight response. So just as we need to have a revving up of our system and to be hyper alert and hyper vigilant and the body pushes epinephrine and cortisol and everything out to get us to uh, out of a difficult threatening situation. Imagine the fibromyalgia patient has this on overdrive all day, every day, and it doesn't calm down. And that changes the way that they perceive pain as well. And it becomes, and you can imagine the muscles are always tense and the, and the brain is always fired and the heart is always beating. This, this also wreaks havoc on the body and it makes the pain, the existing pain much worse. And the pain sensitivity is altered and they just, it's just a chain reaction that gets worse and worse and worse. And so what are the causes? Again, nobody really knows. Could be hormonal. It could be, it could be genetic. It uh, could be after a very serious infection like, um, um, a CMV or Epstein-Barr virus that is never fully eradicated from the body. Uh, because we do know the viruses can trigger an immune response that can make the body go haywire. It happens after corona. We know this. So many people have terrible, a lot of people have chronic fatigue after this and also fibromyalgia after having corona and even after having vaccines. Um, not everybody, but some people do. So it could be a combination of the things. It could be just one thing. It could be uh, also trauma. Trauma is a very big thing that they're finding now in research. Thank God more research is going towards fibromyalgia patients. And they say 50% of the patients had some kind of emotional, physical, or sexual trauma, which is a big setup for something down the road, like a fibromyalgia kind of situation. So we know the body's normal response, normal response to stress is in overdrive and it makes it worse. So the tightening the muscles and making the body ready to run, it's on overdrive all the time. So if you already have inflammation and pain, um, another thing too, inflammation from all kinds of bad diets. I mean, it just aggravates. It doesn't cause it. We don't know the cause, but we do know that if there's a common thread that people are have all these symptoms and we just have to manage the symptoms and get them to the right place and the right people with sensitivity enough to really help them. Um, so you can end up with depression, of course, fibro fog, they call it stress, of course, makes it worse. You have to manage the stress sleep people don't get adequate sleep because it doesn't let you sleep your muscles are tensed up all the time so it's a catch-22 situation people can't sleep and they need the sleep more than anybody else and they just can't rest so the pain and the fatigue make you cranky anxious depressed right so let's talk a minute about the treatment before we bring on our guest so we have a multiple uh, a multi multi-discipline approach to treatment because we have to with something like this and thank god there's more sensitivities out there and i hope that if you have fibromyalgia you will be able to reach out for some help. And I will post some, um, a really good website that I found that I think gives you lots of good information and a book that I found that's fantastic. And I'm sure our guest, Suze, uh, Sarah, will uh, also give us some great advice. Uh, so pain relief, you want to get, you know, what are our goals in fibromyalgia? Pain relief. So of course, the first thing the medical community does is turns to medications and antidepressants are the first thing. And so the good news about that, you know, they're not saying, oh, you're crazy, but it does affect your, your, your nervous system. So it, you have to use a medication that affects the nervous system. So we do know that very low doses of uh, antidepressants will, Elevil and things like that, will actually work in the nervous system to calm down the norepinephrine and to calm down the pain response. It's not for everybody. There's a lot of side effects. Uh, you could take non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, not too effective. You can take muscle relaxants. You can take topical local anesthetics. You can have injections. You can have the medications just don't seem to work. So they do keep things at bay for some people and not for others. So, you know, the first place you just, we want people to be free of pain. So you can blame medical community for not, uh, <laughs> not being sensitive enough, but they really do want to try to help you. And of course, doctors, and nurses, the first thing they want to do is turn to medications. That's what they know. Uh, so in any case, so don't blame them for that because they just want to help you. But we do have to work at a long-term approach. So the long-term approach will, will include probably medications for some people. You just can't deny that. But you can get into all kinds of other therapies to help people. You want to 
control their stress. You want to you know, go into to yogas and relaxation and meditation. You want to make sure their diets are fine. I have a whole thing on diet, but I want to get to our guests so we can talk about it. There's time later because there is a big connection between fibromyalgia and food. And of course, it's very much so with every every disease we have, there's no specific diet for fibromyalgia. But of course, the healthiest way of eating is to eat a balanced diet and anti-inflammatory, fresh fruits, whole grains, the whole thing. You want to eat to keep yourself energetic uh, because you're feeling tired and worn out all the time. So you want to have healthy, fresh foods. That's another thing we can talk about. Again, I lost my slideshow. We would have had a good one. You want to eat foods in high in antioxidants, high in amino acids, and you want to see a therapist. You want to see all different kinds of therapists. It's a lot of work. It's your whole avoda. We call it an avoda in Jewish world. It's a whole, your whole life is surrounded around getting yourself well, but you have to. You have to stop everything and do whatever it is necessary. Do you want to exercise? You want to exercise is crucial. Crucial exercise is crucial to get the blood moving through the through the muscles and actually is, is pain relieving in its own way. You might want to see gluten is a part of your problem. You know, that you go see a, a nutritionist and you want to make sure that you keep your mitochondria strong. So there's a lot of supplements. And again, I want to say a prioritize sleep, avoid drugs. Remember feeling, remember when you felt well too. Don't always focus on this at times. Um, <clears throat> so we want to know, we know that one of the big things we can do to help ourselves is to see a therapist. So of course, um, you know, the bottom line, we want to, narrow down our treatment into four categories. You want to rest. You got to get your body to get pain free somehow, whatever way, the, whatever way that is with the foods, with the supplements, with certain medications. You want to calm the hyperactive responses. You want to deepen your sleep and you want to decrease your stress. You want to uh, repair and, and improve your digestion. So if you have irritable bowel, which is part of the, a lot of people's picture, you want to make sure you're anti-inflammatory and take a lot of probiotics and really take things that nurture your digestive system. Uh, and you want to improve your muscle strength with a little bit of exercise, not too much. You know, whatever you can do, re respect your body. You want to repair, improve every every part of your, every organ system that you can. And this involves visiting a lot of different practitioners, I understand. But try to find someone who can help oversee the overall picture for you so you don't miss anything. And so you can feel a little relieved that somebody cares about you and that somebody is, is guiding you through the whole thing. Um, you want to rebalance your energy, regulate your hormones, decrease inflammation, whatever that takes. You can have acupuncture, you can have Chinese herbal stuff that helps so, so much. Um, and you can reduce any residual, residual symptoms of fatigue and brain fog by, by you know, different cognitive uh, therapies. And also, like I said, medications and herbal medicines are wonderful and eating healthily. So, as, uh, so though, although there is no cure for fibromyalgia, uh, there is a limited research that says the diet has a big impact. Let's go for that. We'll do another session on that afterwards, but I don't want to keep our guests waiting anymore. And of course, there are always the ways to uh, retrain our brain, our conscious thought to change the pain experience. And this is what we're leading up to now is our dear friend, Sarah Halevi, who is uh, a specialist in, she's a certified CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. She's also a, a chronic pain coach. I'm going to bring her on right now and she's going to introduce herself. And she'll tell her story and we'll discuss a lot of stuff with her. Let me stop sharing my screen. Sarah, are you with us, Sarah? I'm here. Good morning. Oh, I'm sorry I had to. I didn't want to rush. I didn't want to miss anything because if I didn't have a guest, I would have done a whole entire hour because there's there's an hour is not enough time on this, as you know. Yeah. But I tried to touch on all the basic stuff. I hope you can correct me where I was wrong. I do see patients a lot, so I have learned a lot myself along the line. They teach me an enormous amount, as people tend to do when they're your clients or they're your patients. So Sarah Halevi, please introduce yourself and tell us what your expertise is and, and your story. Uh, well, first of all, you did a really great job describing fibromyalgia. And um, so I just want to, first of all, commend you on that, because a lot of practitioners don't actually bother to look into it any more deeply. But you did a really excellent job uh, summarizing it. And uh, and so the, when you said you that people should look for someone who can be the uh, manager of the overall picture to make sure that you don't miss any pieces. That's what I do. So that you really set that up nicely for me. Um, I've been I, I've been a cognitive behavioral therapist for 30 years. And about 15 years ago, I started specializing in fibromyalgia uh, after I had been diagnosed myself um, after when my youngest child was a year old. And I woke up one morning and just had pain from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I didn't know what was wrong. I was very, very lucky that I had an incredible doctor at the time. And um, I have, I mentioned her in 
the book, one of the three books that I published this year on fibromyalgia. Wow. Uh, Dr. Nikki Green from Afrat, she was absolutely brilliant. And um, at the time, fibromyalgia was diagnosed with these 18 pain points. And if you had 11 positive pain points, you got the diagnosis. And mm -hmm. she went, do, 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 do. And I had 17 of the 18 points positive. Oh. So she didn't really need to look any deeper. In most cases, you would want to do a process of elimination, test for rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid mar markers, and lupus and Lyme disease. And as you mentioned, all of these things that can look very similar. Um, but it was so obvious I was it, that, that that's what was going on and she really got it right away. So uh, at that time, none of us knew what to do. And so over the years, I have learned from everyone who has walked through the door of my clinic to figure out what needs to happen in order for people to get well. So I want to correct you on one thing, which okay. you said there's no cure. Fibromyalgia can be cured. I consider myself cured. I haven't had symptoms in seven years. So I believe that it's that thank you for the correction, by the way, because I was a little bit leery to say that because I do know there are people like you. I've read a lot of testimonials on people who said I don't have it anymore, but I don't think that's the average person because I don't know if they they were able to do what you were able to do. But what can you can speak more to that? Yeah, I don't think the average person has me. Not I mean, <laughs> and and <laughs> honestly, uh, I think that. Um, when I'm listening to you speak and saying that you have to do this and this and this and this, if I were ill with fibromyalgia right now and I heard that, I would get back into bed and put the covers over my head. There's no way that I was going to be able to do this. So one of the issues um, that I saw right from the beginning is that the the doctor, a really good doctor, family doctor, can say, um, you should try acupuncture. And that is acupuncture is incredibly helpful in with fibromyalgia. So my doctor says, try acupuncture, but I'm laying in bed. How am I going to get acupuncture? How am I going to get physical therapy? How am I going to go to hydrotherapy? How am I going to, how am I going to do all of these things when I can't get out of bed? So it's too much to ask someone who is that ill to expect them to just be able to put all of these things in place. It's not realistic. Yeah. And understandably so. You're talking about somebody who is suffering terribly with pain, with fatigue, with digestive issues, with sleep disorder. It's just not realistic. So what I realized is that what I need to do is manage, manage. Mostly it's a, 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 a system of helping people to make the changes that are necessary. And um, so I'm gonna break that down a little bit, uh, a little bit more than you did. Uh, mm -hmm. What I have learned in terms of treatment is, and you got the first few right, yes, diet is essential. And it's a little bit different for everyone. So there's a little experimentation that has to happen there. Uh, diet, exercise, absolutely critical. Meditation's the one thing you left out, and I'm going to say I, I must have said it was on my papers, yeah. but I didn't. Meditation, <laughs> meditation, meditation almost, yeah. yeah, meditation with um, my clients is not optional; it's mandatory. And people say, "Oh, I tried it. I, you know, I have an app. I can't do it." Everyone can do it. Everyone has to do it. It's absolutely not optional because when the problem is an imbalance in the nervous system. Meditation is one of the most effective tools for reestablishing that balance. Absolutely mm -hmm. essential. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the, the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, components of the central nervous system, fibromyalgia seems to be an overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. So by regaining that balance between calm and alert, that can take care right away, just alone, that can take care of a lot of the symptoms. So meditation is the magic that we're looking for be even beyond medication. So uh, diet, exercise, meditation, sleep, sleep hygiene is essential, as you said, absolutely. Sleeping the correct hours, getting all the devices out of your room, um, having the right uh, pillow and mattress and, uh, you know, setting up so that you can sleep, but sleep is also regulated by the nervous system and can be a problem. And then there are three more things that I will um, break down for you. And that is, uh, is creating a shift in thoughts, 
emotions, and belief systems. And that seems to be uh, as important as the physical aspects because our minds affect our bodies to an extent that we're not even aware of most of the time. Like we are open to the idea that if you think about a lemon and visualize a lemon and then think about biting into a lemon, you'll salivate. Like there, it's not such a stretch to say our minds affect our bodies. But to what extent do our minds affect our bodies? What To what extent do our, our feelings and our, and our thoughts affect our bodies? And I will say to every extent in that anything other than physical trauma uh, can be addressed to a large extent by the mind. Now, doctors do us a disservice by telling patients, it's all in your head. This is not what they mean. Of course, it's in your head. All pain is in your head. In your head. Okay, so it's ridiculous and not very compassionate for doctors to say it's all in your head. What they mean is I don't know how to help you because I have a hammer and you're not a nail. So um, rather than saying like, I'm gonna put down the hammer and pick up a different tool, they don't have a different tool. That's not, they're not to be blamed for that. But what I encourage the medical community to do is say, this is not in my realm of influence. So I'm going to send you here. <clears throat> um, so I Let me was- Let interrupt and tell you that what is one of the reasons I went into um, alternative medicine and uh, Chinese medicine, acupuncture and things. I've been a nurse anesthetist for 30 years and I would be interviewing patients um, for surgery. And I would be a, more, a little more interested than the average person because that's the, my personality. And I would I find out they had chronic issues, whatever they were, dry eye syndrome, it could be, uh, it could be insomnia, it could be irritable bowel, m chronic migraines. And I'd say, well, Jane, what does your doctor tell you to do about this? And I would say 99 to 100%, unfortunately, would say, oh, they told me to go home and live with it. And if I heard that one more time, I would scream. And I said, well, let me find out. And this was in the 1990s through you know late 1990s. And I would get on the computer and do research and come back to that patient and say, here's what you can do. Here's what you can try. Here's who you can call. And I would talk to the doctors and say, you need to be there for your patients and reach out to them in a way that's much more meaningful. And then I started realizing, well, I should be that person. <laughs> so then I went back to school because I wasn't an earth mother and all this stuff. I mean, I've learned so much and I feel so much more healthy. Always was because I was a nurse. But here's what, here's the, the, the key right here is the person can, can, if they can't help you, they should know and be humble enough to say, I can't help you, but I can find someone else who can. And that's you, right? Yeah. It's amazing. Will so you I'm deal with fibromyalgia or other pain, 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 pain um, chronic I, I issues as well? Any kind of pain, any kind of chronic uh, pain conditions, um, including chronic fatigue syndrome and rheumatoid arthritis and everything in that family, um, headaches, migraines, um, certainly digestive issues uh, are in my mm -hmm. realm. Um, and uh, yes, exactly what you're saying. So uh, the the last piece that I put into place recently is um, is coaching. The reason that I wanted to get uh, into coaching is that there is, was a piece missing, which is the how. How do we get someone from this place where they're stuck to really um, on their path to wellness? Because that can be a big leap. For a lot of people. So what I learned from studying coaching is this idea of agency, that taking the, the power to make those changes out of the hands of the practitioners and into the hands of the patient, into the, the client's hands. So if I have agency, it means I have decision-making power over every aspect of my life. And if I have that, then I can do anything. And so I don't want to rely on a doctor to hand me a solution. I want to empower a client to find the solution within themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I recently added coaching. And in uh, so I'm also now teaching in the Jerusalem Coaching Institute, teaching uh, mind-body coaching for chronic pain and illness. Um, we have a new course coming up starting in August. So I'm going to pitch that a little bit. Go, You can go on the Jerusalem oh. Coaching Institute website and check that out, register for the coach. For anyone who is a practitioner of any kind or a coach, a therapist, 
anyone who is interested because it can't just be me. Now there are other people who are doing this, but I, uh, I have a very compelling need to train a lot of other practitioners to do this work because, and the other correction I'm gonna make is that the statistic worldwide is, says right now the, the WHO says 6%, meaning 470 million people in the world have fibromyalgia, it's probably much higher than that. It's very underdiagnosed. And as you mentioned, especially in men who don't complain about their pain, but also suffer. So right now the statistics are around something like uh, 90% in women, 10% men. I actually don't think that that's true. I think there are more men than we know right. and more cases in general. And as you mentioned, in the post-COVID era, or I'm hoping post at some point soon, the, the numbers are growing exponentially out of control due to stress and trauma. Uh, these COVID long hauler syndrome pictures that we just don't understand. Do we know the cause? We don't know the cause, but cause is looking back and I'm about looking forward and if the, the whatever is present with us right now in our lives, that's what interests me. And believe me, we can stay very busy just with that information. Mm -hmm. And that gives us the map, the DNA to move forward in treatment. That's so true. We have to stay in the present very much so. And that's what probably the mindfulness and your meditation is all about as well. Um, yeah. Let me ask you, if I if I know a person that I would like to send to you, or they find that you then your website's right there. I don't know if you can see it, but I put your website underneath of I our can. name. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Um, I hope a lot of people contact you. I'm looking into your course myself um, as a practitioner. But how do they get the energy to even get out of bed to call you? Like, how does that even get started? So I've simplified the contact me, which was actually revolutionary. And um, so when you go to the my website, you can schedule a consultation with me, a free 30 minute consultation directly into my calendar by just clinking, uh, clicking on one of these links to Calendly. And then you go into my calendar and it shows the free times and then you can put yourself in there. And so I, I like to start out with a little, a 30 minute video call like this so that I can learn really more deeply about what you need. Um, I, my treatment, I do three different things, um, three models. So I have one-on-one -on -one consultation, uh, which is a combination of CBT and coaching. And uh, I have groups. So most people come to me privately for between four and eight private sessions. And then I like to put them into uh, a group. Yeah. There group. we are. Okay, I'm back. Am I even that one for a second? Okay. Okay, could you repeat? Um, so I have my individual one-on-one -on -one, uh, therapy and coaching, and then, and then, uh, and then I have groups, and um, so those are the two models that I use for uh, treatment. And then I have my teaching institute, um, so teaching mind-body coaching to practitioners and to make more people <laughs> create more practitioners who are really well equipped to help the incredibly huge number of people who really need it. All right. So how long did you say it, would, it took you to kind of resolve your, your own fibromyalgia symptoms and problems? And, and how did you have to do a piecemeal or did you have somebody helping you? Nobody helped me. My doctor, my physician, uh, Dr. Green really did help me uh, to find the awareness. Um, but what ha what I did was I experimented on my own. I did a lot of experimenting with my diet. And honestly, the diet for me was the last thing to click into place. And it took me probably 10 years to really figure that out. I had always exercised. Swimming is my best friend. Uh, yoga, these things really helped me every single day still. And I had been a meditator from age 19. So I had some pieces in place already. What I needed to do was make some changes in my life, emotional, cognitive changes. And um, then when I realized that really gluten was was making my pain much, much worse um, and eliminating those. Now I have a vegan diet that is gluten free and um, it's really changed my life. I mean, I no longer have any pain at all. And um, the healing has uh, has really been um, astounding to me. Well, so I think I think sometimes too, when people know that they're someone who actually believes them and is believes in them, 
<clears throat> that that goes a long way as well, right? Because yeah. That doesn't exactly. say oh, dismiss it. Say, oh, there you are, that chronic complainer again. Whether it be a family member or a physician or a nurse or whoever, um, you have to have somebody who. You know, like there's someone like me who I, I'm always very honest and upfront and I'll say, like, I don't know everything about what you have, but I really want to help you. We'll stop at nothing to find you the right resources. Uh, you know, even someone like me, I know that it really goes a long way with people, even if I'm not, you know, brilliant at everything, which because, you know, you, you learn as you go along. Of course, I come from the medical world and it's 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 and sometimes it's brilliant to 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 uh, integrate the uh, Western and Eastern medicine. And sometimes it's a little more complicated. Sometimes it's a little more straightforward. And um, <clears throat> that's what actually I come in handy for some people they don't know how to do that as well but when it comes to something like fibromyalgia Lyme disease multiple sclerosis and all the and all these things it's just uh, you have to really hang in there with the person and, and also let, let's make a mention of how not to give up you know let's it, it's a process correct it's not it's not it it's is not a process it yeah. is a process I, I have um a recent client who she's doing really beautifully um but at, after a few weeks she said to me are there people who get better who don't have to do all these things? <laughs> and oh. I could hear, you know, it's just, it's really challenging. I said, well, honestly, no, people don't mostly get spontaneously better. You really have to do all the things that uh, that cause these changes. Um, so it can be intimidating, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer in a team approach. Um, everyone connects differently with different practitioners, but I want mm -hmm. to be able to call you in to help with, this person who needs acupuncture, the beauty of acupuncture is that it's portable. And if someone, when I couldn't get out of bed, my acupuncturist came and treated me in my bed. And yeah. I can't tell you how that calls. We do a lot of house calls for that reason. It was, I, I, nobody else was going to come to my house. And, you know, and that was incredibly valuable because sometimes it's, you, you just get into this dark pit of feeling despondent and, and someone has to be there to help you to take a step, whatever step is necessary to come out of that. That's partly also where I find the groups are very helpful because people in the groups talk to each other and support each other. And when they're having struggles, the other people in the group really support them through it. So I'm really grateful for that. Do you involve the family in any way with these uh, support groups or with the, with the therapy that you offer? Yes. So one of the things I've started doing recently is um, is some couples therapy and helping partners to get on board with the process uh, that that can be very tricky and chronic pain, chronic illness can really impact on all relationships, relationships with with not just a, a an intimate partner, but with children and with parents and best friends. Friends get burnt out on uh, always having to be there to help. Uh, it, and over a period of time, it can be very challenging. So I do talk a lot about um, about how to help make your needs known in a way that will get you the help that you need rather than pushing people away. That can be really challenging. Okay, so before we wrap it up, can you just walk us through, like if somebody comes to you, like what will you, what, what, what does the process take? I mean, is it ongoing for how many months? Or, I mean, you know, I know everybody's different, but like sure. what is the basic structure here? So my average one-on-one uh, -on -one client is between eight and 12 sessions. Oh, that's, um, that's nice to know. Yes. That's limited. So they get better really quickly. Um, I have, I, uh, a tracking log that I've published that I start right away with tracking to because the first thing that we need to do is identify what the triggers are that are causing flares. And so tracking is essential in that. And sometimes people start to get better just from tracking, meaning every day you track your pain level and your what you ate and drank and exercised and meditated and you write it all down and cognitive messaging you write it all down in this journal that my daughter and I designed and then and some people just from the mindfulness of tracking already start to feel better uh, but it's so that what makes it more real I think it makes it more real to them it's not it makes oh, it more real yesterday was this and tomorrow was that and and nobody's listening and this one does have a little bit of sensitivity but doesn't know what to do but you have it down in front of you on paper that's brilliant just to get it yeah I can't it, it doesn't help me if I tell you I can tell you till I'm blue in the face dairy products are causing your flares and your IBS um but until you write it down every day and you say oh yesterday i ate ice cream and today i can't get out of bed well hello unless you know that 
I, it doesn't have the same impact. So mm -hmm. once you do know that in your, right in front of your face, you can see then one, you know, that's something that can help you improve your health. And two, you know, if you make a choice to eat the ice cream that you may have to pay a price. And that's your own cheshbon. That's not about me. So that's where, so most people do, you know, four one-on-one -on -one sessions in, in a sequence in a month. Then they will go to every other week and then and sometimes to once a month. And as I said, I encourage people to go into a group as well um, at that point to have ongoing support, makes it more affordable also. Um, and that way they can pursue other types of treatment at the same time um, with limited resources. We all have limited resources and want to, I want people to use them in the way that's most effective to get the result that they want, which is wellness. So let me ask you this. What, is there any one thing that you see that's common to everybody in terms of uh, what turns the corner for them? Or is this everybody so individual? I'm just curious is like you said, 12 weeks is incredible to see, start seeing success. I'm so impressed with you and I'm so proud of you that you're out there doing this. I'm going to send everybody to you and I'm going to train myself because I think, you know, there's, like you said, there's, especially after Corona now, there's so much of this going on, chronic fatigue, I have so many people that's their biggest like what well, we have four or five things on their list. What are you here for? Well, they're here for back pain, but really they're tired. They're here for headaches, yeah. but really they're tired. Now it doesn't mean that they have fibromyalgia, but they have these things that I just, you know, sometimes giving them ashwagandha isn't enough. Whatever. We, you know, you're trying to get to the root cause of these things and of course in Chinese medicine and and uh, this is probably what you work on as well. Like what is really we never know. We don't know how you got here. Or like you said, it doesn't even matter anymore. Let's see where we are now and let's fix this if we can and send you to the right people if we can. So what is the turning point for people that you see? Is there anything common to all people? Uh, other than people? diet, which I think diet is a huge, uh, a huge element um, okay. and also one of the most challenging to change. Um, but I think diet has a huge influence. I would say if there is one thing, one thing, and I have to narrow it down, meditation. Wow. Okay. So maybe we'll have you on another session and we'll talk about meditation because I have not done that yet. And I, I don't know much about it. I've been trying to uh, have that on my to-do list for uh, probably all my adult life and yeah. um, doing a lot of things in my adult life that I've always wanted to do. But that is, it just eludes me for some reason. And I'm a busy person and maybe that's why I don't, um, uh, you know, take, make the time for it. Cause like anything in life, if you make the time for it, it will happen. <laughs> you know? If you but, take my course, you'll have to start meditating. That's one of the oh, requirements. Okay. That'll be the way that'll be the way to have to kind of force myself, but not in a bad way. I just mean, guys, like sometimes I need a little kick in the tochas, like some people do. <laughs> to get everybody, something does. everybody does. Everybody does. <laughs> That's how anyway, so everybody, if you want to contact Sarah Halevi, please do at www.fibroconsulting.com. And you can look at all of her different courses and all her different uh, classes and her coaching. And uh, the, all the, the, everything's there, right? Everything's there for them to self explain So there's videos. There. There's a lot of advice. And Sarah, thank you so much for getting up super early and putting up with the fact that, Mike, we had the computer guy here for two hours last week. So internet went on and off. I really apologize for that. But anyway, thank you so much. It's been great meeting you. And I can't wait thank to get to know you so further and be a colleague of yours very soon. And thank good luck so to everybody much. who has fibromyalgia. Please contact me for acupuncture or contact Sarah for coaching. And you can get well from this. Please, I, am, I stand corrected. You can get well from this. That's such an uplifting, wonderful way to end. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a wonderful, healthy week, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much.